this tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, uh, a cozy little f a photograph, haha, <laughs> no, it's a rendering of course, uh, with a 3D creature here, a character from the database in Maya, and I'll show you the scene in the Maya view now. Uh, so here we have window shades and here we have the gentleman who comes from that library. You can take anybody or any kind of creature here in order to see that effect. Here is the camera I used for rendering and here's the semi-transparent red object where he's looking at. I uh, used a little bit of depth of field and the sun is somewhere sitting there and uh, I used a Arnold lights physical sky for this scene. It actually renders quite nicely and uh, with not too many artifacts uh, whereas the for example the area light in in Arnold needs a lot of anti-aliasing to turn out nicely. Uh, the window shade it's a single object here it's called mesh repro mesh and we're gonna reproduce it and before I reproduce it I show you what it does here you see it rotates, it opens and closes. I animated that parameter. Okay, new scene. If you want to see the slats, the parts of the window blinds in detail, you need to model them as a volume. And uh, just a hint, let us go to the, well, sort of side or front window and create a, a curve, basically a circle. Actually, I want to created here and um, I press F8 and then I can scale these parts here down or just move them down like this and move those up like this and then I scale those parts in the middle down like this and uh, I have sort of the well the cross-section of the slat of a window blind. When I duplicate this, Control D, and move the other one down there and select both of them, I can create with this icon here a loft, which is basically the slat which I could use. But uh, in most cases, the camera is too far away from them so you just don't bother with them. With the actual volume geometry you just create uh, a very simple, well for example, polygon plane. Let's reduce the complexity of the geometry here because we're gonna deal with a mesh network later and the, the mesh network wants a lean topology and a very very few faces in this case. So we can reduce the subdivisions quite drastically and these as well. And now um, we stretch them all over that place so they get really wide and rotate them by 90 degrees by snapping with the key J pressed. Now it's 90 degrees, now it's a little bit too much. And then I can pick the front edge, the middle edge here, and move it a little bit to the side. So I have this kind of tilt which is common with window blind slats. Right mouse click, object mode. Now we have a very simple geometry which is going to be the basic part of our uh, window blind network. Okay, how do we go about it? Well, you can duplicate this thing now uh, 20 times or whatever, but MASH is the tool to use here because it's so flexible and it's uh, so fast. You find it here. You find it also under effects when you go from rendering, in my case, to effects, you find uh, MASH up there. But uh, we just click here. With this selected, we click here. And now we have um, something very strange and this is often frustrating for people who start with the mesh network. In the attribute editor you have quite a complexity and now you go to the distribute, the mesh one distribute node here and here you see that, that offset uh, when you reduce this to zero here 
and um, change it here you see that we have um, already something which looks like window shades but lying flat on the ground so let's uh, rotate them in space and uh, the odd thing about the mesh network is that you can't, cannot pick this and rotate it it doesn't do anything but uh, what you can do is um, you go back to the mesh network we have sound in the back because uh, there's construction work going on um, I hope this doesn't disturb you it doesn't I don't care so uh, we go to a transform node we need to transform it to move it somewhere else and the transform is right here and we add a transform node the transform node lets us uh, change the rotation of that thing here for example in Y that would be the rotation in Y here we don't need Y do we need this yes we do so let's rotate this by 90 degrees and then we have the window shades um, right here we also want to move it uh, move the whole section further up so uh, we can just type in 12 here for example so it moves up a little bit more so why is mesh so flexible well go back to the mesh node here in the outliner and go to the distribute node and here you see the number of slats in our case and now we can m add so many more really what we cannot do is we cannot rotate them here uh, with the when we rotate uh, the whole section using the transform we rotate everything but individual rotation can only take place with the original slat which we created in the first place it's hidden because the mesh network hides the original object but it's still there in the scene you don't see it but it is there so when you rotate that all the slats in the window shade assemblage rotate as well and of course you can animate that parameter where is that parameter it's here under polyplane in our case and have a look at what ha what's happening here in the attribute editor when I rotate it it's the rotate X value which we need for changing the rotation of the slats in the window blinds that's basically all I wanted to show you uh, before we quit we want to have a look at the transform node again because here you have a transform strength you can change these things and you can change these things and it's such a nice and versatile node in ma in the mesh network so it's really exciting to use it for example the scale 0 0.1 okay you you get my point if you create a house and with windows and you want uh, a window blind on one of the windows in in one of the windows you just use the transform node in order to move it there and uh, apart from that well oh one last hint um, when you animate the rotation here this parameter so I set the rotation I keyframe the rotation right here and then I go to the end of the animation and I set a keyframe for for zero for example so I have this motion here and usually you have the cache playback on and when you have the cache playback on which uh, is displayed by that blue line uh, these things don't move so you have to disable that cache because it caches sort of the starting position here so when you render this nothing will happen but uh, right mouse click here in the timeline cache playback you disable it for now and then you see how the blinds change. Have a good day. Bye bye.